Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'd like to show you how to set up the Trezor Safe 7 using only your phone. This is the very first Trezor device that has ever had Bluetooth capabilities allowing you to manage your crypto with just your phone. You don't ever have to connect it to a computer at all. You can do it completely from your phone. All right, so uh, before we get started uh, with the device, you'll want to go over to your App Store or Google Play Store and download the latest version of Trezor Suite. That's the icon there. All right, and this is what Trezor Suite is going to look like when you first launch it on your phone. All right, so we want to get our device. Now, uh, I did a full unboxing and I'll refer you to that if you want to look at everything that comes in the box. You do get a USB cable, and you can use that to charge up your device. But you don't need the device connected to anything to do the setup with the phone. You do want to make sure you've got it charged up sufficiently, though. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn on the device by hitting the button on the side here. And uh, basically what we want to do, see there's no pin yet because it's in factory condition. All right, so I reset my device and I remember when I first turned it on, there was a QR code that would uh, I could scan and go to the App Store to download Trezor Suite. I don't see that, but you might. And uh, once you've done that, you can dismiss that message and you'll get to this screen. You can tap down here and it'll take you to the settings. You want to go to Pair and Connect and you want to pair a new device. All right, it's going to tell you what the name of your device is, and then you'll go over to your phone and choose Get Started. You can turn off this app uh, data sharing if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and enable the Face ID on mine. You can skip this if you want to. All right, and uh, I'll confirm my location as the US, and now the important part, we get to Connect. So we'll just tap Connect. We'll allow Bluetooth. All right, and it's going to look for your device. You might need to wake it up. All right, and there we go. So it tells you the name of the device that it's found, and you'll confirm that it's a match and hit Connect. All right, and then it's going to do the Bluetooth pairing. So uh, just make sure these numbers match. You'll hit Pair on your phone and on your device. All right, it's going to ask you to confirm the connection, and so you'll tap Confirm, and then you'll enter the security code on your phone. Now, it recognizes that I've already updated my firmware uh, because I did have this device set up before on my uh, computer, uh, but you probably won't see this message. Um, but it thinks it's warning me that it's already been used. I know it has been used, so that's fine. I'll choose Get Started. And then it wants me to allow the connection. It's doing the genuine check, a cryptographic verification that the device is genuine and has not been tampered with. We'll hit continue. And I'll skip the tutorial. All right, now we're going to create a new wallet. So we'll choose Get Started here. Uh, you can also restore at this point, too, if you want to do a restore from backup phrase with a brand new device. You can do that as well just from your phone. So you want to get your uh, backup word uh, card that has the uh, numbers of the words. You can also do this on a piece of paper if you want to. Just make sure to number the words and write them on your card in order. The order is very important. And then uh, you'll just use this little down arrow to go through these screens. If your device gets lost, stolen, or damaged, the backup card will uh, allow you to restore all of the wallets you had on the previous device. All right, they give you some more information here. Don't ever uh, share this backup phrase with anyone, uh, especially a scammer who claims to be from tech support or something like that. Uh, that's all a scam. No one will ever ask you for this, even someone from Trezor if you're asking for technical support. And don't take a picture of it because personal cloud accounts can get hacked, and there's a lot of malicious software out there that scans cloud accounts for backup phrases. So please don't take a picture of this with your phone. Uh, you can make extra copies, but just do them by hand. 
All right, I'm going to use single share backup. You'll see that uh, there are other types of backups. There's multi-share, and there's also legacy options, 12 and 24 word backup. But today I'm just going to stick with single share backup, the 20 word backup that's based on the SLIP39 protocol. I'll hit continue and we'll just go down here again. We'll get our pen and paper ready and then we'll hold to start. All right, and then it wants us to continue on the device. We'll hold to continue. All right, so it created the wallet. It's generated a random master private key, and now it's going to give you the backup words uh, that you can write down in case the device ever gets lost, stolen, or damaged. So we'll hit continue here, continue again, and most of this stuff I covered. So now it's going to show you the words. So as I mentioned, make sure you write them in order. Uh, the number of the word is up in the top left corner. Just make sure you've got them written down in the corresponding slot on your card. Uh, and you can use the up and down arrows here to advance through the words. All right, and then after you've entered all the words, it's going to ask you to confirm that. So hold to confirm. And then it's going to do a quick check. It's going to show you uh, three words. You'll choose the correct word. It's asking me for word number one. So I just look over at my card and tap word number one. Now it's asking me for word number 14. So I'll check my card and tap word number 14 on my card. All right. And now it's asking me for word number 16. So I refer to my card and tap the correct word. Your words might be different. It's random. Uh, it's just going to ask you to verify three of the words in the list. All right. And then once you've done that, you'll hit continue. All right. Some stuff going on on the phone now. All right. It talks a little bit about the importance of the backup. And then hold to continue. All right. And now we want to set the pin on our device. I would recommend an eight digit pin. It's the most secure. You can go longer or shorter, um, but don't make it too complicated or it'll be too difficult for you to remember or conveniently use the device. So try to find a good balance between security and usability. It'll ask you to confirm that pin. All right, and then after the pin is set up, you can close this. And now you'll wanna enable the coins that you wanna manage. I'll just enable some of the uh, top coins here. It's entirely up to you which coins you want to manage. You may just want to manage Bitcoin only. That's up to you. I'll confirm here. All right, so I've completed the setup, um, synced up the device. You can see up here that it says connected. And uh, so now I want to show you how to fund the wallet and how to withdraw from the wallet. Those are your uh, top two operations that you need to get down. Now, you can use Trezor Suite to make purchases. Uh, if you go over here to trade, you can put in an amount and a cryptocurrency. Uh, in order to use this, you will have to sign up for third-party providers. Uh, they use Topper here, but you can choose from other ones. And you will need to verify your identity and sign up for an account in order to do this. So I'm just going to show you how to make a deposit from crypto from a trusted exchange like Coinbase or Kraken, uh, Binance or Binance US, something like that. I think it's very important to understand the mechanics of transferring crypto back and forth between your wallet and an exchange. So that's how I'm going to show you how to make a deposit. All right, so in order to make a straight deposit, let's go back to the home area. And we'll choose our cryptocurrency that we want to deposit. Uh, notice that each of these cryptos has its own account. You can consider them separate wallets. They're all based on the master private key of the device. So if we go into Bitcoin, we'll just choose receive. It's going to show us the full address when we verify on the device. So in order to do that, we'll tap show full address. 
and you should see the address on your device. You'll just verify that it's the same address you see on your phone screen. You'll hit confirm and then it shows you the address to make your deposit. So from here, I'll just copy it into my clipboard. I'll go over to one of my crypto exchanges. I'll use Kraken. So I have some Bitcoin. If I go to my portfolio, you can see I have some Bitcoin in my Kraken account. So I'll just tap on that Bitcoin and I'll say I want to make a withdrawal on the Bitcoin network. And I've never used this uh, wallet before. So it's a brand new address. I need to add it to my whitelist in Kraken. I'll hit add withdrawal address and then I'll paste in that address that we copied over from our Trezor suite. Uh, I'll give this one a name. All right. And then I'll just tap add withdrawal address and then I'll need to confirm that in my email. All right. So we'll just go check our email and then con hit confirm address. All right, and once that's done, I can go back to the app and send that Bitcoin. Now, I just had a small test amount in there. If you're sending large amounts, be sure and do small test transactions first. Always best practice. All right, so um, I'll just tap here, and then it gives me an overview of what I'm doing. There is a withdrawal fee. It's based on the blockchain fees on the Bitcoin blockchain. We'll hit confirm here, and off it goes. And then uh, just go over to your uh, Trezor suite. You can monitor your wallet and wait for that Bitcoin to hit the wallet. Okay, so the first thing you're going to see is an incoming transaction. And uh, it says pending, which means it has not confirmed on the blockchain fully yet. This does not mean it's not in your wallet. It means that it's in your wallet. It's just not spendable yet. You'll need to wait for it to fully confirm on the blockchain before you see it in your portfolio balance. But you can see down here, it's showing up in the Bitcoin account. And now you can see that the uh, transaction is fully confirmed. It says confirmed up here, it says received down here, and you've got it in your portfolio balance. So now let me show you how to make a withdrawal from the wallet. This is the most important operation because it needs to be confirmed by the device. The device holds the private key. Nothing can go out of the wallet unless the private key signs the transaction. And that's the whole point of having an offline hardware device for securing your crypto wallets. So uh, I'm going to just send it back to Kraken. I'll make a deposit on the Bitcoin network. And they're going to give me a Bitcoin address to send to my account. So this is my Bitcoin address of my Kraken account. I'll hit copy address. We'll go back to our Trezor suite. We'll choose send. Uh, we'll paste in that address. And I'll just send the max. Like I said, do small tests. If you've never done this before, I'm just sending about 100 bucks worth. I'll choose send max, and then I'll choose continue here. You can choose your transaction fee, low or high. My advice is to keep this at normal. Trying to go low could make your transaction uh, last a really long time, and that's pretty nerve wracking. Uh, going high doesn't really speed it up that much, so it's not really worth the extra fee. Uh, so I like to keep mine at normal. We'll hit review and sign. And then we'll choose next here. We're going to be confirming on our device. All right, uh, the device was asleep, so it's asking me to enter the pin. This might happen to you. All right, so uh, I entered my pin and now it's showing me the receiving address. I can confirm this in Kraken if I want to. Just make sure that these addresses match. I'll hit continue on the device. It shows me the amount of Bitcoin I'm sending. Then it shows me the blockchain fees that I will incur. This is the Bitcoin blockchain um, fees. This is not Trezor or any third party. We'll hold to sign. We'll just hit this and let it uh, confirm. Now it says that it's signing the transaction. And the transaction has been signed. And now I'll broadcast it 
from Trezor Suite by hitting Send Transaction. And out it goes. Now you can see I have a pending outgoing transaction. And then uh, after a few minutes, it'll show me that it's been completely sent. And then it'll end up back on in my Kraken account. So that's it. Uh, that's uh, setting up the wallet using only your phone. I did a test receive and a test send. Those are the basics. If you have any questions about anything I said, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.